Welcome to another Power BI blog video. Glad you could join me. So today what I want to talk about is, yes, Power BI is awesome because it can connect to so many different kinds of data sources, but one feature that sometimes some people just aren't familiar with because they're just starting to get into Power BI is this option called From Folder. Now what does From Folder do? Well, From Folder still will connect to all of your data sources, but it will look in a folder for that actual data source, like an Excel file. Um, so how do we take advantage of this and why is it so important? Well, <clears throat> think about this. Let's say you are uh, a manager of, uh, or you're a data analyst for a store chain and you have different stores that you analyze their data for and the way that it works currently um, at your stores is that the managers in the morning, before they leave their shift, they will put in an Excel file of all the transactions that have taken place. And then in the evening, your PM manager will also do the exact same thing. And you always want to see the freshest data most possible because you're always doing some whatever kind of analytics to it. And you have lots of stores that you're in charge of. Well, this is where we would run into an issue because technically you would have to, you might be thinking, well, that means from each store, I need to bring in their Excel file, do an append, which is just simply where you take one sheet and you put another sheet right underneath of it, which is great as long as the column structures are the same, the data types are the same, the data in there is you know very common format wise, but that takes a long time. If you have 10 stores, that would be nine separate appends that you would have to do. Well, Power BI has this feature called from folder where instead of doing it ten or nine times if you had 10 files, you're gonna do it once, you're gonna set it and forget it, so to speak, and that process is actually gonna happen over all of your files. Well, how does that work? Well, we say, okay, look at this folder, look at all the files in here, and then we can even filter down what files we want to bring into our report, which we'll actually do in this demonstration. Then we're gonna say, look at one sample file. We're gonna do all of the transforms that we want then Power BI is going to say, okay, these are all the transforms you want to have and ha want to happen over all of your files. Then I'm going to make this what it does in the background, creates a, a custom function and it invokes it and every file is going to get passed through that function and every file that gets passed through is going to function over it with all of your transforms and then bring them all together in one query. So rather than just talking about it, let's actually see how this is done. So before we get into that, let me show you the, the data that we're going to, to work with for uh, this demonstration. So this is just a really basic Excel file because I just really want to get the, the point across. Uh, and of course, your data is probably going to look way more complicated than this. But we just have four columns here. Uh, we have a date column and well, actually not a date column yet. It will be, but date, what the transaction number what the product was that we sold. So we're just pretending we only sell one product at a time uh, and the amount that it was sold for. And every store, this is for store number 118, every store has to submit this file and put it in a shared folder uh, for the data analyst. So what we're gonna do, the data analyst is gonna come over to Power BI and rather than just simply saying, hey, I am going to bring in each separate folder uh, or sorry, each separate file, I'm going to point to where that folder actually is. And then from there, you can help me out and do all the transforms for me. So as we take a look at Power BI, and we're gonna do the get data, but it's not a common data source. Uh, Cause this one, I guess is just not as common for the Power BI developers who made this. So you're actually gonna have to click on more or you could have just hit the get data icon as well, which brings you up all of the different uh, ways that you can connect to your data. And the one that we're gonna go to is folder. So I'm gonna say folder connect. And then at this point, you could have either copied out the file, the folder path location already in File Explorer and just copied it in, or just take advantage of their browse. And I'm gonna take advantage of the browse here. And this is in my video too, and it's on my desktop and I have a folder called December 11th, 2020 folder with duplicates. So I'm gonna hit okay. And actually I'm gonna show you that, uh, what that actually looks like over here as well. So let me come over to my desktop, show you what's in the folder itself. And this is what we see what is actually in the folder. I've got four separate files here, three for Jacksonville and one for Winter Haven. You might be saying, Matt, I see an issue with this. If I'm only supposed to be looking at Jacksonville, what happens about these Winter Haven stores if we have different data ana uh, analysts for different branches? Well, we've got a great fix for that. But first, before we get to that, let's hit okay. 
it's going to look into that folder, look at what files are actually in there. So these are the files and notice here, I'm getting a little bit of a warning here because I currently have that one file open. So let me click cancel and I'm gonna have to come back over, I'm going on my other screen over here. Let's get rid of that file so that we can actually do this because if not, it's gonna say, hey, we can't connect to your data because one of your files is open in another active window. So we're just gonna go back, nice little review here of how you get to from folder. So we went to get data folder, we're gonna connect, we're gonna browse out to it. So it is on my video two and my desktop. There we go, we're gonna click on okay. And we're gonna click on okay. And you might be saying, Matt, why are you calling it with duplicates? Well, that's gonna be another little extra piece we talk about at the end there. So these are the four files. Let's go to transform data, because if you just do combine, you're skipping all of the cleaning steps and really of how you want this to really work for you. So right here, the very first thing it says source, because that's the source. This is the folder location, and these are all the files that are in it. Now at this point, I don't want, if I'm the Jacksonville person, I do not want this Winter Haven file. So what can I do to not have that Winter Haven file? Well, I can simply take advantage of filtering. So if I hit the drop down for the name of the file, and I go to a text filter, and because you might be going, well, just put it, uh, just uncheck this right here and it won't load, which is true. But for future times when more files are dumped in, it's only going to exclude that Winter Haven store. Every other file that gets put in there, whether it be for Orlando, uh, Tampa, whatever it might be, I'm using Florida because I'm from Florida, uh, it, it's going to load that. So I'm the Jacksonville person. I want to be very specific. So I'm going to say, you know what? All the files I get in here, I'm gonna put on a text filter and I'm gonna to go to contains, which means it's looking at this name and it has to contain this text string that I'm about to type in. And the one I'm gonna type in right here, and we'll zoom on in, is Jacksonville. And so Jacksonville is what I want. So then I'm gonna come on over, I'm gonna hit okay. And this is a common mistake that happens with a lot of people. Um, when you do contains and you do these text filters, it is case sensitive. So how do you fix that? Well, two different ways. Option one, we're gonna go back into our applied steps and modify it. I could put a capital J, hit okay, and now we're good to go. However, you know, you might wanna go, well, what if, what if I have a manager who accidentally doesn't type it in with a capital J uh, and does a lowercase j? Well, then their file would not be included in this process. So if you're trying to kind of debug at the beginning and not later and avoid any unwanted outcomes, what I would recommend is let's get rid of this filtered row step first. I would do a transform here. I would say, you know what, let's take all of these names of the files and let's lowercase them. So that way, no matter what happens, whether they typed it in all lowercase or all uppercase, before we do any of the combining, it's gonna say, you know what? The very first thing we do on the source step is we take all of your file names and we're gonna do a transform and we're gonna transform them all to lowercase. Now, when I type this in, again, I still have to put lowercase in here, but now I'd never have to worry about the casing messing anything up. And again, you could have done all uppercasing and then typed in the whole Jacksonville in uppercase. It would be completely your decision. And so now I'm gonna hit on okay and things are looking pretty good. So what do we do now? Well, other things you could have done, just so you know, you can put filters on the date access, modified, created, um, even on the extension of it. So if you know you're gonna have other kinds of files in here that are not Excel, uh, you can filter out based on the file extension that's in here. So lots of different ways to choose what files you're actually about to load in. So I'm ready to load, what do we do now? Well, now we're gonna come up here and we're going to come and hit this little two arrow drop down next to the content. And it's saying, hey, the content, these are binary files, so what do you wanna do? Well, this is my combine. So I'm gonna hit this and a whole bunch of steps are gonna be done in the background for me, which is wonderful. You don't have to do uh, a lot of the work. Power BI is doing all this work in the background for us. And so you can see that it's working and the first thing it's gonna say is, okay, you're gonna combine your files how do you want it to be done? What file do you want me to use as the sample file? Um, and you could just say, well, I want it to be the first file, which is exactly what I want. And then it's gonna say, all right, in the first file, this is a sheet, which is what we want here. And it could be a table as well. Uh, so we're gonna click on okay. And this is gonna happen. It's gonna go back and forth a little bit. And then finally, it should land on, I might have to minimize this takes a while for it to do its uh, changes in the background. There we go. 
So look at all of this extra stuff that got done in the background, which you do not have to worry about. Well, what, and, and take a look. They, they accessed all my files and they brought them all together. And so technically at this point, sometimes people will just start doing all their transforms after all the files have been combined together. And they do any transforms that they want here, which is completely fine. Uh, however, sometimes if you know your files are going to be large, and you know that there's going to be a lot of transforms involved. Uh, I would say do it on the sample file because then you're actually going to make the process quicker. It's going to have to do those transforms quickly on a smaller file and then do the combine at the end. Rather than combining all these large files and then doing the transform, you could see a little bit of a performance issue with just doing it after they've been combined and not doing it on the sample file. So let's take a look at how the proper way to do this should be if you don't want to take any shortcuts. What you would do is you would come over to your sample file. And on your sample file, it's saying, hey, this is saying that I'm taking in the very first file that you told me, which was the number 118 file. So those are all the applied steps of how it got here. Lowercase text, it filtered the rows. And then the navigation, this row zero, it's saying take the first one, because it counts in base zero, of the file that you're looking at. So then if we come over here, not to the FX, this is actually the function that's written for us, but if we come to the transform sample file, this is where we can make all of our transforms. So we say, okay, date, that really should be date. So we're gonna change it from ABC123 to date. Transaction, I wanna keep that as text, just in case uh, we have anyone doing leading zeros, I don't want them chopped off by going to number. Product, definitely gonna put that one as text. And amount, let's do it as a fixed decimal number here. So it only goes out to four units uh, after the decimal place since it's just currency. And now, all of these steps that I just wrote over here on this transform sample file, that is what is going to get passed in in this function. This function is going to take every file that comes in from here on out and do these four steps every single time. So let's take a look at what this looks like now. And so you're noticing it looks pretty much the exact same. However, I did the, the transform sooner rather than at the end. So now I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this um, all transactions, all jacks transactions. And then that would be it. You technically would be done with this process. But I want to give you a little bit more information about this. So let's do this. I'm going to close and apply. And as we close and apply, and I'll get <clears throat> bring this over once it comes up. As it's closing and applying, let me show you something else we're about to do we are going to put a new file in this folder. And this new file is coming from the PM manager. Now the PM manager has made a little bit of a mistake. Uh, the PM manager unfortunately didn't realize the AM manager put in the AM data already or maybe it just took a, the AM file and just added on to it. And so you might be saying, well Matt, now this is gonna be an issue because when we put this file in here, and we do this from folder. It's gonna look at this file and there are gonna be three transactions that are now duplicated in our data source. And you could think of some other issues where this might happen at your work, your process, whatever automation you might have. If you know that data could potentially be duplicated within the folder itself and you don't want that and you want to avoid having duplicated data, I recommend doing this last step that we're about to do. Um, even if you think you're never gonna have duplicated data, I still recommend this step to avoid those problems that could arise. So how is this going to work? So the first thing I'm going to do, let's get rid of that. And I'm going to come over here off to the other side of the screen and I'm going to put that uh, piece of data actually into that folder. So I currently have it saved uh, in a different one and it's our Jacksonville store. So they come in, they put in their folder other file into the folder, which is great. So now we come back over here. This is also one of the other things about Power BI that I found out when I do, I'm a trainer, uh, and when I give trainings for people who, who are you, you kind of new to, to Power BI, one of the things that they think about is that when they save a Power BI file and then they open it up, it automatically refreshes the data, but it actually doesn't. So let's actually show that here. So I'm just gonna save this and I'm going to put this right here on the desktop and we're going to call this the from folder jacks stores and we're going to click on save 
and we're gonna go over here, we're gonna file. We are going to uh, close this out, make sure it's saved one more time. All right, things look good. Let's open up our Power BI desktop program. And as it's opening over here, remember that second file that I just put in, it technically has duplicated data because our PM manager just, just messed up. They didn't realize that the AM person had done it, whatever the case might be. But again, one of those gotchas is that we say, hey, when we open a file from folder Jack stores, we should see all of the data. Uh, and if we take a look at this, I could just go to the data view over here and notice that this is just the originals. We don't have any extra data. These were my three store files and each one had three transactions to make it easy, but there's nothing there. So how do we come over and actually get the freshest data? Well, over in your report view, you could click on refresh here and then you would get the freshest data. So again, when you open a file, it does not refresh. You actually have to hit the refresh button. But I wanna show it over here in the Power Query Editor because sometimes you wanna get a refresh of your data when you're in the Power Query Editor. And so when we click on Refresh Preview here and we come through, there we go. Now we see that we've got some duplicates. So let me come over, I'm gonna filter them. I'm just gonna sort this ascending and you can see at this point that we now have some duplicated data here. The socks, the hat, the vest. And that's because of that extra file that was put in. However, we're, we're getting to see the, the newer stuff too um, from that fourth file. Uh, I think it's the jacket, the belt, and the mug. Uh, so that's new, that's great, but we got that duplicated. So how do we get rid of duplicated data? Well, what we wanna do is we want Power BI to look for and you might go, well, could I just, there's this option called remove duplicates. And what remove duplicates does is it finds any rows of duplicated column values and it gets rid of them. So I could come over here, right click, and I could say, let's remove um, our duplicates. However, what I would do um, is maybe you want to kind of avoid if what if another company, another store is using the same transaction numbers. So I would actually control select all four of these. And then I would do remove duplicates because now I'm making it really unique. It's got to be this exact record, December 12th, 210, hat 1678. The chances of that record being uh, somewhere else at another store, uh, the exactly same date, same transaction, same product, same amount uh, is, is very uh, minimal. Um, but again, hopefully you'd have better store processes when putting your data in. But let's just pretend we don't. So we're going to click on remove duplicates here. And now that is my very last step in the applied steps. So what that means is any time that this is refreshed and we put new folders in and we say, let's refresh the data, it's gonna bring all of them in and we're gonna see all of the data here, but then it goes, hey, I'm always gonna look for duplicates and I'm gonna remove them for you. And that is how you can use the from folder option to help automate your processes so now if we had 100 different Excel files in there, it's only going to look for Jacksonville uh, and it's going to remove all the duplicates at the end. I hope this helps you out in your Power BI learning. Uh, please subscribe below, comment if you have any comments, let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, if you have any future videos that you would like to me to talk about, uh, please let me know. I would love to help out. Have a wonderful day.